Croiso friends, welcome back to Opus L and I, where we are not doing Viking anymore. For like two weeks, anyway. This week, I'm exploring one of my favorite underutilized medieval garments, a half cloak. These cloaks were worn mainly in the 14th and 15th centuries almost exclusively by men. They buttoned up one shoulder, usually the right, although a case could be made for the buttons being on the shoulder of the dominant hand, regardless of side. We can see the legacy of early medieval and Viking rectangular cloaks in the side fastenings, although these are much sleeker and more tailored, less draped. These cloaks appear in manuscripts, illuminations, and funerary brasses all through the 14th and 15th centuries, and we even have an extant example in the Boxton man's cape. The delightful V from Snappy Dragon came across some gray wool blend twill whilst out shopping, and knowing exactly how on brand that is for me, kindly sent it my way. And I knew it was gonna be perfect for this project. So everyone, go grab your cuppa. Today, I am drinking a new release from Tabletop Tea, Butter Pecan! As you might guess, it tastes like delicious cookies and it's so good, I, I don't even mind the terrible pun. Let's get into it. I started off by gently washing the wool fabric to remove the sizing and fold the fabric very slightly. Not enough to occlude the pattern of the weave, but just enough to fluff up the fibers a bit. A lot of the recreations I came across of this type of cloak were either three quarter circles or full circles, but I'm going to make my cloak a half circle, both because it drapes similarly to some of the manuscripts and funerary brass illustrations, and because the Boxton man's cloak is a half circle. I measured from my neck to fingertips and added an extra six or so inches to account for the hem and neck hole, and then I used a measuring tape to mark the curve of the half circle. There aren't a lot of indicators of darts at the shoulders of the half cloaks, either in illuminations or in the extant Boxton cloak. However, I wanted to avoid the bunching and draping at the neck that a half circle cape can give, and a dart at the shoulder will help keep the cloak sitting in the correct position with the buttons at the side, instead of slowly turning as I wear it so that the opening is in the front. I forgot to film cutting the linen, but I just used the wool as a pattern for the linen lining, marking the sewing lines at the shoulder darts. I sewed the shoulder darts on the wool and linen separately, and then pinned the wool and linen together, right sides together, and sewed up one of the straight edges around the neckline and down the other side, so leaving the curve without a neckline.
Because this cloak is cut in a half circle, parts of it are on the bias, which means that I will want to hang it to stretch. And because the cloak and lining are two different fabrics, which will behave differently, it's doubly important to make sure it hangs long enough. Once the two fabrics have hit maximum stretch, I'll carefully trim the excess linen, even up the wool at the same time. After everything is all evened up, I'll fold the hems inward by about half an inch and pin the two sides into place. Then, using wax limb thread, I'll fill the seam together with tiny, barely visible stitches. into taking an action, playing on your sense of curiosity, or promoting something too good to be true. No, you did not actually win the lottery. If you feel you are under such an attack, simply hang up the phone or ignore the message and contact the help desk or information security team right away. Thank you to my newest Kofi members, Christina, Ansley, and Carmen. Your support and the support of all of my members and croissants makes it easier to do what I do and to provide quality content for everyone. Thank you so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break to see how I finish up the cloak. The last step is to add buttons and buttonholes to the shoulder opening. I've got an entire container full of buttons of varying degrees of historical adequacy, and I picked out some lovely silver filigree ones. Because of their size, I am marking the placement for four buttons, leaving a spare in case I lose one of them later. I'll sew them to the edges of the button placket, as most medieval buttons were, and then mark and sew the buttonholes with black silk twist thread.
Thank you all for sticking around with me through this project. I have to say, I had a really fun time filming the reveal. I quite enjoy how much the look of a tunic and chausses can change with different styling. From the Viking look of the finished Lirio project to the high gothic 14th century look of today's outfit. It's all in the accessories. I had all of these grand plans about how I was going to finish this video up this week and then heroically edit some existing footage I have of a project that's already finished, film a reveal, write and film the intro and outro, and have it finished next Thursday before I leave for Gulf Wars, but like, croissants, I don't think I can. I just don't think there's enough time in the day to get all of that done and pack and be a good mama for an extra week and finish making arrangements for Bran. So I think I'm officially canceling the next video, which would have come out on March 18th, and instead I'll be back again on April Fool's Day. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and maybe share it around. Click the bell if you like getting notifications and you haven't already. If you'd like to find me on other social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere. And all of these links will be down in the description below, along with the link to my Kofi where you can check out my shop, become a member, or make a one-time donation to help support the channel directly. As always, friends, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Well.